It is Larry here at LC Model Shipbuilding, and uh, for this this uh, series, we're not going to actually be doing a ship. We're going to be doing a car. So, this is our uh, Smokey and the Bandit um, one eighth scale Ravel model build. Uh, we're going to be putting this together with some add-ons as we go. Uh, but the initial beginning video here is pretty much all just basic kit. So, I know I generally do model ships um but i also love cars and uh i wanted to get this one started just kind of take a break from titanic and uh do something a little bit different so thank you very much for watching um please uh please subscribe if you're interested in seeing more and uh let's get okay, started so step one is actually the engine um however i am going to move ahead of that because I don't have my engine paint here yet. So what we're going to do is work on starting the front suspension and move into the looks like exhaust and rear axle. So that's basically what this video will probably encompass. So here is our um, underbody and uh, pretty well detailed you got brake lines in here and um you know these would have been uh drainage um drainage caps um that are still used on many cars today um the kit does have some fairly thick plastic right here um where it probably had a sprue that others were molded at the same point so i'm gonna work on cutting that off and trimming it down um, doing some trimming around the edges just basically to get it cleaned up but those kind of come all the way down here and also down here so how we're going to do this is we're going to end up doing a flat black base down here so this will be basically all flat black and then um, we're going to do the drive shaft we're going to do the uh, rear axle the leaf springs all that in more of a gloss black um, which would hold true to what it should be, uh, as well as the, um, the front coil spring um, A-arms that will go up here. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, that's how we're going to start rolling. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up, and then we're going to go ahead and get it painted and start, uh, start putting some stuff together. Okay, so those spruce supports that I was just showing, they are quite thick. Um, so the best way I found to get them off without damaging the kit uh, was basically just kind of scoring them along here and then uh, kind of whittling them off and breaking them off. Um, and then from there, we're just going to end up filing it down to get it smooth and basically back to what it should look like. So, a little bit more. Okay, so that's good. Then we got... Sorry, sorry for the noise, but you can pretty much get what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and file these, then I'm going to paint. Be okay, right so while I wait for the um, the uh, underbody to dry, um, I'm going to start cutting off some pieces from the sprue to get them ready for paint. So here we have our rear pumpkin. Now, I like to kind of cut this stuff down um, just to make it a little bit easier as I'm going here because this is kind of uh, molded pretty thick, honestly, um, when it comes down to it for how big the parts are. And I don't like to do a whole lot of what I'm just doing right there, but I'd rather cut wherever I possibly can and then file just because of how thick these pieces are and I'm trying not to deform any of them so I don't have to use much filler. Um, this is a commission build or a sponsor build I guess you'd say so I'm trying to make sure we get this one 
as close to perfect as possible. So so a couple little things once we put this together and join it. Um, I'll show a couple little tricks that I've used for painting so you don't have to move things around 30 different times to get different angles and all that stuff. Um, but this kit gives a lot of opportunity to really get a nice paint job out of this, um, especially with the size of it. I mean, I've built a lot of model cars, usually in 125 scale. So to do a 1-8, um, the only other 1-8 car that I've ever done uh, was the uh, Eagle Moss DeLorean, which that's a whole different ball game because that's all metal and um, that lights up and everything. Now this is gonna light up, but that's custom done. Um, the Eagle Moss kit is, uh, it lights up from the factory. Of course, there's a ton of add-ons and all that kind of stuff, but um, this one we're gonna do our own stuff too. And what I'm doing right now is making a paint holder, so. I'll show you what that is here shortly, but I like to use old sprue for this type of stuff. So our pumpkin is going to basically join together like that, except I'm upside down, so like that. And I'm going to glue it together before I paint, just because uh, then I'll be able to get all the different angles and all that good stuff to it much, much better when I'm spraying. So, yeah, I want to make sure I'm able to get it together nice and tight to try to make sure I don't have too much lines going on with it, to make sure we don't have that plastic look to it. That's ultimately kind of the goal. being it this is round right up here this will be on the underside so you're not really going to see that too much but still I'm trying to get it right but I'm trying not to file in one direction too much because it being round um, I don't want to flatten it off okay so essentially that's what that guy looks like. Okay. And I'll probably hit that with a little bit of like 2000 grit sandpaper just to get the file marks out before I paint it. But yeah. Essentially, there we go. That's what that piece looks like. Then we're going to have our um, our uh, coil spring A arms here. going to do the same thing with filing. So if you're generally tuned into this channel for Titanic, um, obviously I'm still working on that. This is kind of a, a break. I just want to take a break between uh, decks and uh, do something a little different. Sometimes you just need a change of scenery. And model cars generally don't take that long so I think it'll be a fun little build well big build fun big build and um, we're gonna do some cool stuff with this one because we're doing this as Smokey and the Bandit with our add-ons um, from Cameron Models Works um, and you can get them on the uh, 1 8 uh, scale Smokey and the Bandit page I'll, I'll post the actual link um, in the description here but um 
yeah, I'm just excited to do something good, or not good, but something different than Titanic right now, so it should be fun. But I'm going to go ahead and get these parts cut up, or cut out, and get them prepped for painting, and um, then we'll start hitting that. So I'll be right back. So when I go to paint something like these, I kind of make these little contraptions, um, and all this is is a piece of the sprue with an alligator clip on it, um, and they work really, really well for being able to get into weird areas. Um, this I just have on a popsicle stick with a little bit of tape on the back side. Um, one thing I did do, uh, I went ahead and sanded the seam line that was on the drive shaft just so you can't see any of that. And I am going to go ahead and hit this as well along the tubes here, um, just so you don't see that line as much. But for glue, um, I'm using uh, Tamiya, the orange, um, so that. And um, yeah, basically that's what we got. So when um, it comes to doing things like this, obviously you got the inside or the bottom and the top. Um, we'll flip that over and I'll find a small little spot to hold on to it with the alligator clip and then just respray it with the airbrush and uh, we'll be we'll be golden. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting up. I gotta get my um, my leaf springs ready to go and uh, a couple other little pieces here and we'll get them painted. So we'll be back here. So soon. just like every other Ravel kit that I've ever built, um, there is a fair amount of flashing on this so just be cautious of that. It will take a fair amount of sanding and prep work before you paint any part to do this right. Um, and you don't want to go overboard either, because uh, if you're using a heavy grit sandpaper, um, you'll run into some problems real quick. So I'm actually using a thousand grit right now and just kind of trying to take the, the edging off of this a little bit <clears throat> but Ravel is notorious for this and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they re re uh, box kits from years ago not re box but re make kits from years ago that um, you know over time the molds just start to kind of lose their crispness and I mean, this kit was originally made back in the early 80s. So, you know, we're talking 40 years. Um, and, you know, I ran into the same problems with Constitution when I built that. Um, it just has an incredible amount of flashing. And you just got to be cautious of it and uh, be aware of it. I see people that have built this car and don't do this don't spend the extra time on this and uh, it shows in the final product so I don't want that to happen with this so just my personal advice on uh, on this kit if you decide to build it it's a great kit I mean same thing with the Constitution they they do a really nice job of doing the detail it's just unfortunate that um, the molds over time start to get kind of how they do so you know if you're if you're going to build it spend the time do the sanding you know if you want a really nice finished product you got to kind of put in the prep work so just a uh, word of warning when you're dealing with anything from Ravel but um yeah once you get it kind of taken care of they don't look so bad so anyway that's just my thoughts on life with that so these pieces here the sway bar um, that's the front sway bar this is a rear sway bar we got the rear axle and we got the drive shaft so I'm gonna get ready to paint them up um, I already have the uh, I already have the um, the a arms and uh, the uh, coil or the leaf springs drying right now so they are sprayed there is something to be noted on that all of this stuff here is gloss black versus the um, 
the A-arms and whatnot that are actually a semi-gloss black. So just uh, FYI, that's why I'm painting them separately. And real quick, because I didn't really show it, I just kind of explained it. Um, I'm going to make up one of my little holders real quick. And I just use the uh, cheap electrical assortment from Harbor Freight. They're like $3.00. Um, and you get a whole bunch of them. So, um, that's what I make my, uh, my little, uh, holders out of. And then I just cut a piece of sprue that I'm no longer needing. Get it trimmed down to where I need it. Let it fly all over the place so I can sweep it up later. Someday. And then, basically just uh, crimp that down on there and some of them in this kit actually have the round part in there too the sprue just will fit right in this particular one that I grabbed has uh, the little uh, little clips on it but no worries either way and you just gotta Make sure you got a place to mount with. And voila. Painting stick. Done. And then I'm going to hold it by the, um, by the uh, bushing here. Because that gets painted a different color. So this works out perfect. Alright, I'm going to get these painted up. Oh, I guess I wasn't really focused, but there you go. You can see it's on the bushing. So I'm going to get these painted up. Okay, okay, so I got my suspension pieces drying right now, but I figured this was a good one to show how bad some of the flashing is, so you can kind of get an idea of uh, what you're dealing with and why it's so important to uh, sand down these edges. So hopefully you can see that. I think you probably can, but, uh, yep, we're going to work on cleaning that up, and then uh, we'll get this painted up, and by the time this is done drying, we should be able to start assembling some pieces, so. I'll okay, right so here we go with the body. It's painted, so I'm going to do some detail work right now. First thing we're going to do is kind of do our brake line. Now, I'm not going to paint that, and... I don't think it would turn out if I tried to paint it. So what I'm going to do is just kind of scratch along the detail there to expose a little bit of the gray underneath, which will give us basically the effect of what I want for the brake line to look like. And some would say, oh, the brake line should be silver, but if you go out and look at your car, they're generally kind of a very dull aluminum gray. So this will work, I think, because there's no way I would ever get the straightness of painting this by hand. And since the <coughs> detail is there, I want to try to bring it out. So there's two lines that kind of run parallel to each other. And then you have some little mounting brackets that are there. Those I will probably hit with a little bit of paint. So I'm going to work on this for a little bit. I'll pause it right now, but I think you kind of see the effect that it's making. And it seems to be doing what I want it to do so all right I'll zoom in a little so you can see it a little better but there you go it gives it the look of brake line so 
Okay, so here are all of my suspension, exhaust, all basically the parts that are going on for this step in the video series. Um, so we got our cross member here with our, uh, I believe they're the upper A arms. Yeah, they're the uppers. Then we got our rear sway bar. We got our shocks. We got our catalytic converter and exhaust. We got our drive shaft. We got our spindles. We got our um, lower control arms. Then we got our exhaust system. We got our leaf springs. And we got our front sway bar. So I did the little detail painting on all that stuff. So pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I might hit these little bushings right here. I didn't get them yet, but uh, I'll do that quick. And then, um, then we will go ahead and get ready to start putting it onto the lower body. I just painted the gas tank uh, silver, so got that how I want it. And uh, we're pretty much ready to go on putting some of this together. Um, I did respray the, uh, the rear pumpkin. I just wasn't happy with it, so... That is uh, currently drying, but we'll be ready to go on here very shortly. So I'm just going to unwrap this real quick and paint the uh, paint the straps for the gas tank and get that ready to go. And um, after that, we should be ready to start putting together some of the uh, actual pieces. So um, again, I'm pretty pretty excited with how the detailing is coming out. I think this is going to have a real nice look to it. So um, let me go ahead and do a couple little more pieces of detail work and then uh, we'll get started on putting some stuff. Okay, so our first piece just basically goes right on here. Um, and this is our, uh, our cross member, which will also kind of hold our engine in place eventually here so just adding some glue and it just basically rides on the frame rail there so we're just going to put that down on here and get it basically into place like so had it for a second but that appears to be right so I'm just gonna kind of hold this in place for a couple minutes kind of let it set up and then uh, we'll move on okay so now we're going to put our spindles and control arms on and to do that we're just going to put our glue onto our control arm. I'm going a little liberally there because I don't want it to come off down the road. <laughs> Literally. And they just basically ride in there. You don't put any glue on the uh, spindle itself because you want that to be able to rotate with the uh, tires once they're on. So just setting that a minute and we should be good. And we do the same thing over here on the passenger side. Okay, so just sits in there and that goes in there and then we press them down uh, I 
Thank God it's not a real fast setting glue. That could have been bad. Okay. So, there we go. Front part there is done. Now, we take our control arm. No, I'm sorry, not our control arm. Our, uh, our sway bar. <clears throat> and that rides up into there the control arm and connects on these two points right there so how I'm going to do that is basically glue in here use too much but I don't want to use too little either although this glue does stick quite well okay now just want to make sure that that's landing where it's supposed to and it appears that it is I'm reluctant to flip it upside down though right now. So I'm gonna put a little dab of glue on the um, on the top there where the uh, and I push that out. I've been working with CA glue so much lately that I've gotten so used to having accelerator that uh, this is kind of weird not using accelerator. Okay, do the same thing over here. Just getting a little bit on there. We'll push it up into the control arm. And replace both the spindles again. Okay. That one is in. So what I want to do on that is just clamp it down. Well, I'd like to clamp it down. May not be an option. But I can at least clamp down the sway bar. <laughs> okay, don't clamp down the sway bar. Don't clamp down anything. There we go, again. I'm just gonna hold it for a minute. So, let me get this set up and then we'll move into the rear okay, section. Okay, so after a few minutes of playing with that, we're good now. So, there we go. You can kind of see what they look like, close. Um, 
pretty nice honestly it looks like it should so anyway now we're going to move to the rear here and actually no we're not we're going to move to the exhaust so our exhaust basically rides like that on that hanger right in here and then you have your front portion of your exhaust from your catalytic converter up and this would connect to the engine however our engine is not in yet um which is fine i'm just kind of dry fitting right now to see how that would go it looks like that connects like that basically okay so before I actually glue this I want to make sure I can still slip the drive shaft through which I should be able to do um, only because yeah, I'll be able to slip it through. Okay. And you can see I kind of painted out the U-joint uh, in there and all that good stuff. So, we got a drive shaft. Alright, so, I'm probably... Yeah, I'll connect it. So, first up for the exhaust is just getting uh, some glue back here in that mounting position. And we're just going to drop it right down on there. I think I am going to hold just until we put the um, engine in because I want to make sure my front pipe lines up. Although it does have some play to it. So yeah, I'm going to say we're probably okay. Now, there's that little part right there that's supposed to mount into the catalytic converter. But, as you can see, there's nothing inside the catalytic converter for it to mount to. So, that's a little interesting. Would have been nice if that little hole was there that's supposed to be. So that is weird also, um, the, uh, the mounting point is, you got a hole there obviously that you can see, but it doesn't quite line up to what it should. So you either do that which kind of looks bizarre because to me that looks like the bottom of the clamp like it's supposed to. It looks like it's supposed to be like that. Yeah, I'm going to play with that when the engine comes on. So we're going to hold that one to the side for right now. But next up then is going to be our rear axle assembly. So I'm going to move this for a minute and grab our axle so i'll be right back okay next up let's put the uh the uh, rear leaf spring on and um this goes on fairly simple 
which is good. So we're just going to put some glue here in the mounting point and a little bit along the rail just so it stays good and solid. And just because I want to help promote it to stay a little quicker, a little dot of CA glue. And we're just going to drop that in right here on, on the uh, axle or the mounting tube, whatever you want to call it, mounting point, I guess. So same thing on the other side. Get that good and covered. Touch of glue, CA glue, I mean. And we put that right onto this side. Okay, now that's what I didn't want to have happen is them kind of flipping around, which is why I'm using the CA. So what we're going to do is just hit that a second with some adhesive promoter. As they both fall in. So I'm going to just kind of set them there a second. Just lay down right in there and we didn't get enough glue on it well CA I mean put a little bit more CA on there just to help promote this because this will help the uh, regular glue hold just to get it in place. basically like that. Okay, there we go. So, we got them on, and I won't use CA on the actual mounting points for the, uh, for the leaf springs. I'm just going to use regular glue on that, because once that sets up, it will be perfectly fine. And we just want to hit it good on the mounting points so there's good adhesion. And there we go. Next, we have our drive shaft, which just gets slid in. Um, that does not get glued. So that goes right 
in. I'm only pulling, pulling that out for a second here. But I'm going to actually wait until these dry. And then I'll put them in. So that will be probably next video, but that's okay. Or off camera. Our last two pieces are our shocks and struts. Uh, our struts, I'm sorry. Um, and they mount into the little cap that's there. And... Back to the frame rail, kind of underneath. But that one, just trying to see where that's supposed to exactly go. Because we want it to hit there. then go in to there, which isn't making much sense. Sorry, I'm just looking at the directions here. I see what the problem is. I reverse these so this one goes here and that's probably why it was acting weird about holding in so your mounting point for it is on the outside And luckily there's still enough glue here to make this work right. So not a big deal with changing this up. Yeah. Okay, so that makes more sense. And then this mounts like that. Okay, so. I'm going to put some glue on the uh, inside edge of this and at the very tip there where it goes into the mount and then we simply slide that in and attach it in. There we go. That wasn't so bad after all. Flip this around and do the same thing with the other one. And then pretty much once I get this done, this is going to wrap up this video. Our next video is going to be our engine block and uh, building up that. So I'll be working on that over the next day or two and hopefully have something out again at some point in the next few days as we get closer oh, just gotta get the mounting point can't see it there it is okay so here we go now you can see we got our rear axle in there, we got our shock in, we got our front suspension pretty well put together, and that is the end of phase one for this series. So thank you very much for tuning in and watching, and uh, like I said, coming up next we're going to put the engine together and get that painted up, 
And um, I mean, that's a big engine. I, I was already out looking at it and all that good stuff. I got a, uh, a Pontiac Blue um, for our engine block, which uh, was done by M&W Finish Works. So we'll be showing that all in the next video. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty cool Pontiac Blue. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep moving on. So again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.